Let's have a look at what's new in WordPress 6.7. Hi there, my name is Bud Krause for InstaWP and first, the big picture. This is the third and final major release of 2024. The focus here is on improving what is already in WordPress. This does introduce the new 2025 default theme, and it continues to open the door to what the WP admin might look like in the near future. And let's not forget, there are plenty of performance enhancements and accessibility improvements, not to mention bug fixes and security patches. Now for you developers out there, there's a new plugin template registration API. So this is a standardized way to register your block templates within your own plugin. And I think you're going to find this to be much easier to do this with this API, which is very much in its infancy. We now have some UI that goes along with the block bindings API. Now this applies to paragraphs, headings, images, and galleries. The interactivity API, as well as the HTML API got some upgrading as well as internationalization to make performance much better. Now for you site builders, here are some of the things that I'm just going to mention in passing and I'm not really going to demonstrate. Many blocks now have more design options such as color, background images, and border. The shadow effects can now be applied to the group block. This is something that many people have been waiting for. The column block now supports border radius, so not just the columns block, but the individual column blocks. And now it's easier than ever to use fluid topography. So what am I going to be showing you? Well, first we're going to have a look at the new default theme 2025. And then we're going to look at the better editing experience. And here I'm talking about the improvements made to the site editor. We'll also have a look at the query loop block and see how that has changed. I'll show you how to create a gallery instantaneously. I'll also show you how to convert HEIC files to JPEG files. And of course, the quality of life changes. Now I'm going to be demonstrating WordPress 6.7 with the 2025 theme. So let's have a look. WordPress 6.7 comes with a new default theme. It's 2025 and it's ideal for all kinds of blogging, personal blogs, photographic blogs, complex blogs, but as always, it's good for any kind of website. Now, this theme is designed to show off the new features of WordPress 6.7. So let's have a look at some of those. Okay, and let's go over here to styles. And this theme has nine style variations and the corresponding color palettes as well. And quite a wide variety of typefaces. I'll get back to that in a second. I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, select the evening style variation. And I'm going to go down to over here and choose this typeface over here. Okay, and if I like that, and I do, I'm just going to save that. And this isn't anything different that you've already seen in any block theme. Here's the style book. And of course, I can make any changes I want to any of these elements. What I do want to show is the topography and all the different typefaces that this theme comes with, quite a number, and a wide variety of font variations. I'm gonna get out of here. Now let's have a look at what else this theme has to offer, and specifically, well, the templates, no different than most themes. It has about eight or nine pre-built templates, and of course, you can customize templates like any block theme. What I do want to show you is over here in patterns, there are seven template parts. These are headers, footers, and sidebars that you can use. And that's a little larger number than usual. And also patterns, 70 patterns. That's quite a large number of patterns. Well, as long as I'm in the site editor, I might as well show you a few things in WordPress 6.7 that will provide a better editing experience. Specifically, I'm talking to changes in the UI that apply to templates, patterns, pages, and eventually posts. Let's have a look at what I'm talking about in the templates section. 
And specifically, I'm talking about three new user interfaces. One is the filter button. In this case, I can filter on author. Over here is the layout option. And you can see for layout, I can change the screen from grid, which it is now, to table or list. Let's have a look at the table view. Well, that looks a little more traditional. And this cog over here represents appearance. So I can change what I want to display. Currently, I'm displaying just the template, but I can also display it by author. I'm not going to do that. And you also can change the order of these. I can change the number of templates that are displayed and what properties I want to show or hide. Currently, I'm hiding the preview option. Let me just check this out here. If I close this out over here, we can now see the preview option a little more clearly. If I go over here to patterns, the user experience is going to be pretty much the same. And that is, of course, the whole point of improving the editing experience. That is to provide universal controls. So once you learn something, you don't have to relearn it for something else. And here I've got my display options. I've got two of them. And the same thing over here, the appearance or the the cog to change the appearance of this screen. Finally, in pages, now here we have our list of pages. I can change this, if I click over here, I can change this to the grid view. You don't see any images because I don't have any featured images to show up over here. And I can filter, you can see these over here. And of course, I can change the appearance just like you see over here. These are sort of the screen options in the more traditional look of the WP Admin. So you've got some new UI to improve the editing experience in the site editor, but there's one other thing I wanna show you when it comes to improving the editing experience and that's zoomed out views. For showing you zoomed out views, have a look right over here first. Here is the toggle button that lets us zoom in or out of the canvas area. Currently, I'm in the default view. But look what happens when I insert a pattern. Simultaneously, the toggle button is switched on so we can have our zoomed out view. And I'm gonna just search for a few patterns here to insert. Here we go, there's one. And I'm going to do Two more, let's do a call to action, and let's just add a gallery pattern. Zoomed out views are really good, especially when you're working with patterns. You don't have to use it just for patterns, but it's really good because what it does is allows you to take a look at a higher level of the blocks and how they're put together for your layout. For example, here you can see, this is a query loop block over here. Over here you can see, here's a group block. Now you really can't edit the individual blocks, just the high level containers makes it easy to move around. You can see over here, you can move them like this. Okay, you can actually shuffle them. That's what this button is for. This is new. Okay, I just did a shuffle. Here's another shuffle. And if I don't like the zoomed out view and I want to edit the individual box inside these main containers, I can just select this over here. Now this is the regular view. And now I can go into individual blocks like so and just edit those. Notice too that the patterns column over here is not overlapping the content area. In past versions of WordPress, the patterns column overlapped the content area. Well, no more. And so it's much easier to see what's in the content area. So that's zoomed out views if you want to Go back to what you had before and have a, again, a zoomed out look. Well, just click on this and you can see the difference right like so. WordPress 6.7 reintroduces us to the query loop block. You could say that it's gotten a bit of a refresher. And in order for us to understand what these changes are, let's have a look at the query loop block as it is in WordPress 6.6. .6. So one of the things that you'll see over here is this setting. If I click on this, 
I have three other settings and all of this has been removed now in 6.7. I'm going to show you where it's located in just a second. Over here in the document inspector sidebar, this toggle right over here, as well as this toggle over here, these two toggles have been removed. And the reason why they've been removed is that this is now the default behavior of this block. So now let's have a look at the query loop block as it is in WordPress 6.7. Here we are. So let's just go right over here and you can see there's now just one toggle. Inherit block use content width. If I toggle this, I could set the content width and the wide width. Now that has not changed. That is still the same as it was before. But now we have a better user interface that lets us use and change what type of content is being placed in the query loop. So here I have post content. I can change to page content. I could even change to custom post types if I had any. I scroll down here a bit more. And here is where the settings that were in the toolbar have been moved to. So now you can see I can change the post per page if there are any offsets and the maximum number of pages I want in my archive. All these settings are now located over here in the right sidebar. WordPress 6.7 makes it easier than ever to build an image gallery. So you can see over here I have these five selected image files. I'm going to just drop them right onto my page. And there they are. It couldn't be any easier than that. And of course, as always, I can edit or work on any one of these individual images just by selecting the image. And while I'm on the topic of images, you can now take HEIC formatted images. That's the image format that's commonly used with cell phone pictures. And you don't have to run them through a converter anymore like you did in the past. Now, all you have to do is drag them, here are four, and the HEIC image formats are automatically converted to the JPEG format. Now, you don't have to drop them right into the media library like I just did. You could actually drop them right into a page and they will automatically be converted from HEIC to JPEG. Let me show you two changes coming to WordPress 6.7 that just might make the quality of your life a little better. So let me add a new page. And if you don't like these starter patterns popping up every time you add a new page or post, there's now a way to toggle that off. Let's get rid of this over here. Let's go to the three dots options over here and down to here in preferences. In the general panel, here's the toggle that you can switch off. Show starter patterns, now switched off, and you won't see that anytime you start a new page or post. Now, the second thing I want to show you is this, and it's very subtle. Let's say I was going to add a new page, and I'm getting ready to publish it. And now the publish button is right over here. You don't have to move your mouse anymore. Previously, you'd have to click over here where the publish button was, and now you just click over here. Of course, that's a very subtle change, and that's the whole point of WordPress 6.7. A lot of very subtle little changes in this release that should make working with WordPress a lot easier. What can we say about WordPress 6.7? Well, I would call this a polishing release. That is, there weren't a lot of showstopper changes, but a focus on improving the user experience. We saw that with how we could modify how the screen appears when we were working with pages, patterns, and templates. And there was an improvement to the query loop block, certainly a refresher to make it more streamlined and easier to use. And finally, as always, this sets the stage for future releases, namely 6.8. And I suspect in that release, we will see changes again to the site editor, it making it look a lot like what the WP admin will look like in the future and a movement towards working collaboratively with others using WordPress. So stay tuned. Thank you.